Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, I've been missing dragons and their epic nas. And according to the comments, so are you. But they take a lot of time and work, so I usually work on them in the background. So in the meantime, instead of go big or go home, we're gonna go like moderate and like consider home. <laughs> I still wanna make a dragon, but I'm gonna be doing it under a more adorable fantasy aesthetic. And the most adorable fantasy aesthetic thing I can think of is a fairy dragon. So let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get it going. Art time. <laughs> Also, if you happen to like my chaotic self, maybe consider subscribing or liking or something because I think that still does something for the algorithm, but heck if I know anymore. Okay, let's go. To start, we'll need some tin foil, some clay, and some sticky keys. Uh -huh. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Ooh, you were not the problem child this time. Yeah. Alrighty, first step is grabbing some tin foil, aluminum foil, or that snazzy aluminum foil, and squish it into the rough shape of a little fantasy sparkle lizard, also known as a fairy dragon. Before we get to the clay this time around, I decided to make my own glass eyes. It's not often that I do, but I really felt like it would go well with this little guy, and it was good practice for me. I draw out the design using Procreate in a bright green to complement what the fur color will be later on. I attempt to check how it will look, but... Yeah. I then printed it out in just normal paper for a test, then photo for the final. Wow, I'm a klutz today. But before I glue the two together, I sand the bag for a better grip. To join them, I used a little dab of UV resin. I then blasted with the power of the sun. And here is the end result. They turned out perfect. And I can't remember why I stopped doing this because they look snazzy. Now it's time to break out the clay. Using good old Super Sculpey, I cover the foil in a thin layer of clay. I want to keep this as light as possible so it doesn't take a left turn into flop town. Once I have the basic shape, it's time to add the eyes. They will gauge where everything will go so we don't end up with something like this. For this guy's design, I went back and forth if I wanted a furry or scaly dragon, but since my last few have been all scales and the next few are going to be all scales, I thought it'd be a nice little reprieve to do a little furry fella. I wanted a very soft, sweet expression mostly because it meant I can do round eyelids and show off most of the eye that I made. But of course, it also aids in the, I'm a cute little guy, give me a cookie look. I'm not sure why, but I can never, ever get the nose even try one. Oh, that's crooked. My first attempt at a snoot just was not it, if I'm honest. It was giving weird frog turtle vibes, and that's not at all what I wanted. But my camera came in clutch, making it all blurry until I could get it under control. It's always looking out for me. For the ears, I went with a droopy downward style type ear to aid in the timid, shy personality I felt this little fella had. Basically, I just made Mushroom's ears, so it's got a little bit of farm animal vibe, but I'm okay with that. Instead of the typical spike-like horns dragons tend to have, I decided to misshape and twist them to give a more organic look. I also textured them to look like wood. I imagine these guys being really close to nature, so it only makes sense that its design have aspects of it. Being a tiny bean means we get tiny toe beans. I wanted 
itty bitty spiky paws that gave the impression of claws because even though they're small, they'd be feisty. Look at that face. Look at that face. Isn't that a cute face? That's a cute face. Now I must have fur the cute little face. Last step in sculpting is texturing the face so it looks furry. I just make tiny strokes in strategic yet also random directions so the fur looks like it has some flow and isn't just going in one direction. Here, the bean is all sculpted and man, I really need to make my own eyes more often. They just give this guy so much life already and I just love this so far. With that done, it's time to move on to armature. <laughs> That's as bad as my idea as I thought it'd be. <laughs> Bop, boom, bam, pow. <laughs> okay, that one went off the table. <laughs> When you get what you want, but not what you need. Now, normally I use ball and sockets for the legs, but as you can see, they don't fit. So it's time to break out all reliable wire. This stuff always comes in clutch, but I just really need to order smaller sockets. This is why it takes me two weeks to make a video because I'm doing stuff like this. To make wire legs, I cut a long piece and use the armature pieces as anchor points to wrap it around the body. Some long arms you got there, bud. I then used my drawing as a guide to figure out the legs bend and shape. Then the armature is done. To attach the head, I need to make a hole in the back. Oh, oh! I don't like this! I don't like this! Oh god! Once that gruesome task is done, I fill the cavity with hot glue and jam the armature in before it cools. I repeat that step for all the paws as well. Next up is bodybuilding. For that, I use good old quilt batting. As you can see, it comes in these big sheets that I cut into many strips. I then wrap it around the body over and over and over and over again until the body is built up to my liking, making sure to account for the thick knot, so whatever fabric I'll be adding later on which in this case isn't really thick, so I can go a little bit ham. But regardless, like I always say, like I always say, if you want chunk, chunk, chunk boy, you go and get chunk, chunk, chunk boy. If you want thin, thin, thin boy, you go and you get thin, thin, thin boy, okay? We support all body shapes and sizes here. Yep, yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Yep, I did just break the horns doing a bit. It's fine, I'll fix them. Moving on. <laughs> it's sewing time, and since I only want certain parts of the doll super fluffy, I'll be using this minky for the main body. I make the sewing process as simple as possible for me. Ten years in, and I still barely understand it. I essentially make a really long vest for the body. It's just a tube with slits for the legs to slide through, trim it nice and snug, and sew down the middle with a basic stitch. My method is just piece it together until it works. It hasn't failed me yet. I mean, probably sometimes, but most of the time, no, it's fine. For the mane, we're sticking with my trusty white fluff so I can airbrush it later. At first, I thought just to cut it in strips and sew it on, but it seemed too thickums and gave a blunt start. So instead, I made my life harder by cutting it off the backing and manually gluing it all the way down. 
In hindsight, I'm not sure the slight difference was worth the effort, but I already committed, so we're gonna pretend the difference is drastically better. Please. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. With sewing and questionable choices done, it's time to fix my oopsie from earlier and fix those horns. I drill holes into what remains to insert a wire frame inside, which I should have done out the gate. I then secure it with super glue and then break out the sturdy stuff, epoxy sculpt. It's a two part clay that gets super hard and durable, so this won't happen again. I re-sculpt the horns, trying my best to match the curve and shape and texture it to hide my mistakes and blend it to the original. With them all fixed, it's time for belly scales. For that, I'll be using this thick felt. I cut them into itty bitty squares and shape each one into a little scale. Once I cut a fraction of what I thought I could get away with, I glue them strategically from starting from the tail to the neck, gluing just the edge so the scales can still overlap when posed. Since I had the glue gun out, I also made tiny little scales on the legs and face to add a bit more dragon feel. And with that done, it's time to add some color. Oh, just kidding. Before that, I need to mask off the body because I airbrushed all over the place. I'm sliding him in because I don't want to drop him because I love him. I don't want you to ever break. And this is his friend Jeff. My name is Jeff. He takes care of the hairbrush. Essentially, I'm doing almost a full rainbow down the mane and leg fluffs, just removing the warm colors because I wanted it to contrast the warmth of the main body. Once the bright colors are done, I go back in to shade the body and scales, well, the belly scales, to give more life and variance so it's not so flat. just to finish it off with painting the face and leg scales. For the face, I kept it pretty simple so the bright colors could pop the most. So just a base color of tans and browns with a little shading here and there. I 
thought about going fancy with the colors on the horns, but I reined it in. It's different for me to keep a lot of natural colors in, and the end result is great, but I just like adding colors. So of course the scales got a color gradient, because I absolutely have self-control. It's so natural and also magical at the same time. I just love this little guy. Of course, you can't forget those toe beans. And while they're drying, let's open up a new machine to add to my robot family. When a taser first reached out to me, I knew exactly what I wanted to make. But I've always been a little intimidated by laser engravers. 3D printers, I understand. Well, now but a laser engraver is a whole different level. That's why I'm so thankful for a teaser for all of their help with every step of the process. Okay, wait, big review. Okay, you can, I can't see it because it's all dark, but like, it's there. Ta -da! <laughs> okay, I'm unboxing and this is like totally unrelated. This knobby knob right here, this knob right here. It's so satisfying, like, this is a smooth boy. This is smooth as heck. And it's just the little things that they don't think about or care for me to review, but like this knob is a nice knob. <laughs> little booty face. They come with little, little textures. So you set up, they, they put it in step. Yeah, step one, two, three, so, so I know what I'm doing, what screws I'm supposed to be doing. Like that's just, come on. Everything just feels really high quality and feels very sturdy, which is great for somebody who is chaotic and will absolutely break things. Not sure if you could tell by the box, but this is a very big boy. The working area expands to about 17 by 17 inches, and it's by far the biggest build plate item that I own now. It can also cut through about 15 millimeters of solid wood in just one pass, which as far as I understand, is a thick boy. It can also engrave on just about anything, which is how I used mine in today's project. For a test run, I decided to make a little coaster out of my logo. This way, editor Sarah stopped spilling coffee on my desk. Staring at the laser isn't the best idea, but thankfully, this engraver has a fancy filter that covers over the laser tip and protects our little eyeballs. The first test came out great, which speaks to how beginner friendly it is. Now it's time to move on to the main piece. I'll be engraving and carving fairy wings for this project in acrylic. I had to paint the acrylic black because science, but man, the detail of the veins in the wing came out perfect and had no idea how I'd create such an effect without this machine. With these wings turning out as magical as they did, I felt I needed to take this laser one step further. I've been wanting to show my patrons more love and editor Sarah and I have been brainstorming ideas for quite a while. With this engraver coming our way, a couple things seemed possible. I sketched out this little cute guy and really wanted to be able to give him to you all, but I don't know, what do you guys think? I think having little LED lamps is just a really cute little small thing that everybody can like place on a desk or something. And I think it's just an adorable, sweet little gift. Now, just a full disclaimer, any imperfections are completely on me. This is something, again, that's completely foreign to me, and so there's definitely going to be a little bit of a learning curve. It's still very beginner-friendly, again, considering I can do anything that I'm currently doing, but, like, any imperfections and, like, the laser messing up a little bit or something, it's just me learning what the heck I'm supposed to be doing, so bear with me.
I think with a little bit of tweaking of my settings and maybe probably buying some more fancier acrylic not cheap stuff just to test on I think these could really make a cool gift and I really think I'm going to start adding them to my roster seriously what do you guys think All in all, I'm very happy and very thankful that this was sent my way. If you'd like more info on this wonderful machine, please check my description. Here are the wings straight from the laser cutter, and for a first go, I have to say they turned out pretty snazzy. I love the result, but now it's time to finish them off and assemble everything. First, I need to hand drill some holes that a nut and bolt will go through so that it can be posed. Now it's time to add some color to the wings. I'm going to be following the same gradation pattern I did for the mane, but this time I really want to be light handed with this because I still want light to be able to shine through the acrylic. I'm also going to make sure to leave the tips very clear so that you can tell that it's transparent fairy wings. To protect the paint, I just went over everything with a thin layer of UV resin with a little bit of mica powder mixed in, just so it gave a little bit of sparkle. You can only really see it in certain lighting, but it's just for protection, which was the important part. Now it's time to attach the wings. I just used an itty bitty nut and bolt with a little bit of wire as a spacer and also so I'll have a way to attach the wings to the actual body, because that's kind of important. To attach the wings, I just cut a little slit by the shoulders, filled that cavity with hot glue, and just shoved the wire in quickly and hoped that it all stayed together. I then just repeat that for the other side. And with that, the little fairy dragon is done, and it's looking absolutely gorgeous, so let's take a look at the final montage.